Do you really know the Christmas story? While your family may gather around on Christmas Day to read Luke 2, 8 through 14, I am challenging you this month to dig deeper into all the stories surrounding that Oh Holy Night. We've looked at where the story actually begins. You might be surprised by that one. We've also discovered the mind-blowing predictive accuracy of Scripture, which cannot be denied. You can reject it, but you have that choice. But the validity cannot be denied. We looked far back in the family tree of Jesus and found some not-so-secret family secrets. Real lives in the lineage of Christ impacted by sin and brokenness, showing God birthed His righteousness through, at times, very unrighteous humans, just as desperate for the saving grace Jesus would usher in. We did some math and counted generations listed in Matthew's gospel genealogy to discover why Jesus is true rest for our weary souls. Then we looked at all the interrupted and sleepless nights of Joseph and how his obedience 2,000 years ago sets a beautiful example for us today. If you've missed any of the Christmas story broadcast this month, you can find them all at lifeword.org. Watch them with your family and discover more as you prepare your hearts to celebrate the miracle of Christmas. Today, we're focusing on Rachel's tears. Now, wait a minute, there's no crying on Christmas. Well, yeah, there are actually many tears shed throughout the holidays, mine included. People are grieving all sorts of things. Hearts are hurting, and whatever struggle, loss, or pain you may have faced this past year or maybe facing today doesn't magically disappear when the calendar is flipped to December. Holiday blues are very real. Life keeps coming at you, and if you read further into the Christmas story, you'll see there was massive heartache around the birth of Jesus. Matthew 2, 16. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. This is a dark cloud of evil surrounding the birth of Jesus, known as the Massacre of the Innocents. Herod, in a fit of rage as a result of being deceived by the wise men who didn't return to tell him where Jesus was, ordered the death of baby boys who were two and under in and around Bethlehem, the Prince of Peace born into the violence of earth. Rachel, the most loved wife of Jacob, was the mother of Joseph and Benjamin. She died while giving birth to Benjamin near Bethlehem, and Jacob buried her there. In Jeremiah 31 15, Rachel is weeping over the children taken from their mothers into Babylonian captivity. Matthew quotes the same prophecy in chapter 2 because Rachel's tears were once again symbolic of the broken hearts of Jewish mothers in Bethlehem weeping over their sons who were no more. Yes, while the Christmas story is Mary and Joseph, Jesus in a manger, a star, shepherds, angels, wise men and gifts, the birth of Jesus is also so much more. It's packaged by the very real heartache and pain of sin. Rachel's tears are not unlike our own. We mourn what was, and we weep over the evil that surrounds us. But the joy we sing about, the gifts we give, and the birth we celebrate is because of the hope and light Jesus brings in the darkness of it all. That's the truth. Hope was born on Christmas Day. Hearts are hurting all around us this season. So if tears are falling, give yourself grace to feel what you feel. But remember, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us through every tear. I'm Lori Klein.